There was an earthquake uh, on Teesside this morning, about four hours ago. Measured three on the Richter scale and people thrown out of their beds in Hartlepool over there and the sirens going off at uh, Wilton Works. It was as nothing to the political earthquake which occurred on the 12th of December in Teesside here when the whole area with only one or two exceptions went bright Tory blue. An incredible result, especially here in Redcar, you know, a steel town uh, which went conservative for the first time in living memory. Uh, so we're here to find out what the Labour Party is going to do about getting those seats back. The Labour Party are trying to get back on track. Who do you want to lead the party? First and foremost, we need a strong foundation, you know, and uh, to shore up uh, our membership. Yeah. Um, so for me, the least divisive, please, because, least divisive. because you know, at, at the end of the day... Well, know, who is that? Um, I believe at the moment Lisa and Andy is probably the, the best choice because... Me too. Because she represents something that I think will appeal to the universal... She's Blue Labour. She's, she's left of centre, I think. Uh, what I've always argued and argued for years, she's left of centre on economics, but she doesn't go for the identitarian politics, which I don't think plays enormously well up here. It doesn't, and we need someone who's going to be able to bring us back together. And if it's Rebecca Long-Bailey? Whoever ends up being the leader of the Labour Party will get my full back in because I represent the Labour Party. agree with you entirely about Lisa Nandy. Uh, I mean, if I w was still a member of the party, that's who I'd vote for, with, without, of, of those candidates. She's the least repellent as well, <laughs> if you like. That's, of, a, great, that's a great commendation, Carl. But, but, you know, she is somebody who I believe listens to both sides of, of the uh, narrative there and I believe that's what we need right now. And uh, I mean you look at the, the places you did well on December the 12th, Cambridge, Putney, Canterbury. I mean it's hardly raising the red flag for the workers is it, you know. Which is a huge paradox. To, Which is a huge paradox. To what we're trying to espouse. Yeah. And, and, and I think she appeals to a large audience yeah, no, beyond did. the Labour Party. No, I agree with you. So crossing the T's into uh, Stockton South constituency, which uh, went uh, Labour in uh, 2017, uh, electing Dr Paul Williams. Uh, but he lost his majority with a huge swing, about 7.5, uh, to the Conservatives at the last election. Uh, and the interesting thing in this election was that uh, Labour simply didn't pick up enough votes in their most working class areas. Hiya, Rob Little from the Sunday Times. Yeah, Cheers, yeah. mate. You're, kind of, you're like, you've walked into the set of a movie that was decommissioned. <laughs> Paul, I'm sorry you lost. Uh, you were an incredibly popular candidate. Uh, enormously respected, respected as well by the opposition. Uh, what I heard more than anything else, Rod, on the doorstep was, we like you, yeah, you know, you've been a great MP, you've been visible, you've done all the things we would want you to do, um, but we can't vote for you. Um, and, um, and they said that the reason for that was because of the leader of the Labour Party. The but people don't feel that Labour represents them, and it's heartbreaking in many ways because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a doctor who kind of got involved in politics because I could see that there were loads of my patients who, um, whose health problems weren't being met by medicine. And I felt that I need political change, and so I kind of went into politics in order to change things for those people, and yet those people on the doorstep would tell me, well, you, do, you, you don't represent us. You don't, it doesn't feel like you're speaking our language. Your, your party isn't, isn't the party for us. Who are you going to vote for? Um, I've decided to support Lisa Nandy in the election campaign. She paints a vision of, um, of a Labour Party that is much more in tune with um, the type of voters that we need to, um, to win back. Because so Keir Starmer is the, the, ob the, the kind of most obvious choice. Keir, Keir could, yes. could probably become Prime Minister next week. Um, so he, Keir Starmer from he, Islington. He is the man who really wanted to stop Brexit. You know, and where's he from? He's the Islington bloke. You know, Sir Keir Starmer. That's a hard sell, isn't it? Well, Boris Johnson, in theory, yeah. is a hard sell for the people at Teesside. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. It depends how you sell it. What if Rebecca Long Bailey becomes your? <laughs> I feel like I would owe it to to Becky to give her 
the um, the opportunity at least to define her leadership on her terms before before making threats that I was going to walk away from the party. So there seems that there's some realisation uh, amongst the politicians up here, the ones who uh, have suffered consecutive defeats, that something more fundamental has to change simply than getting rid of Jeremy Corbyn. So I think they see in Lisa Nandy someone who is northern, which is important, uh, uh, and also not associated with identitarian politics, uh, who could have been in earlier days a blue Labour choice for the leader of Labour, uh, a good speaker, uh, and someone who might heal the party. Who knows?